Brasserie, how you doing? Hey. Um, oh, well, this isn't going to work as well now. Oh, well. I was going to apologize to the sixth marriage bachelorette party back there. <laughs> that we accidentally booked the same room tonight. But, like, I would like to sincerely thank them because I'm the guy, I'm the reason the show started 20 minutes late, and I spilt my beer five minutes into the Kevin set, and I'm not the asshole in the room. Like, this place is the great escape for assholes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Nothing I've prepared is going to be better than that, so... God damn it. So... I have no idea how to get into my own material. <laughs> I can just say old ladies are shitheads again, I guess. <laughs> and you know, I mean old by 65 or I mean Yeah, anyway. Fuck it. I it's gonna be a little rocky, but I'm just gonna go into it. I I don't think I have joke Tourette's because I have like some semblance of control over it, but I've got like joke OCD. If a joke pops into my head, I have to say it or like my family will die. Um, I, was at, I was at work, I was in the kitchen waiting in line to get coffee and two of my coworkers were arguing the merits of uh, canola oil versus peanut oil. And I said, well, as long as it's not snake oil. <laughs> And that initial silence, that was the entire reaction I got. I was like, you know, snake oil. It was a, a, a patent medicine uh, created by Clark Stanley in uh, 1879. Uh, otherwise known as the Rattlesnake King. I mean, funny story, it actually didn't contain any snake. <laughs> uh, it was it was mostly um, mineral oil, uh, cayenne pepper, and turpentine. <laughs> Which their response was, "You know things," <laughs> and like I've never heard an affirmation of knowledge said with such pity. <laughs> Uh, but now it's it's become knowledge that I do this at work, and like I I've fallen into the position of funny guy at work, uh, probably because of that joke OCD thing. And uh, but like a lot of the jokes you make at work are very contextual, and it's it's gotten to a point where whenever I make someone laugh at work, they go, <laughs> "You should add that to your act." <laughs> And so I'm going to tell you a few of the things I said that someone legitimately said that to me, but with no context, because fuck you, Josh. <laughs> Chocolate quarters? <laughs> Chocolate economy's really taking a hit. <laughs> well, they arrested him for a nibbling nibbling. <laughs> Didn't Michael Douglas get that in the face? <laughs> I'll let Josh know that some of you laughed. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I'm on Facebook at work a lot because I work at a cool company, or they like to tell themselves that, and um, I'm scrolling through Facebook, as many of us do, and I am suddenly confronted with a probably 98% nude woman's ass just on my screen and I was very confused and shocked and did the whole like minimize like and then I was very curious as to how that happened <laughs> so I, I I maximized my window <laughs> no euphemism there that's actually what I did <laughs> And 
someone that I put yes to when they were sending me a friend request liked a page that was dedicated to butts. <laughs> and Facebook felt the need to share with me a photo of a butt that they had liked. <laughs> and it's like, I want to take, find them, take them under my wing and show them the rest of the internet. <laughs> like, dude, I know a place where they take the thongs off. <laughs> But, like, Facebook's become a really kind of mysterious and, like, odd entity. Like, everyone's had that moment where Facebook's like, Hey, here's your ex-fiance. You should be friends with her. <laughs> but, like, it's gotten deeper and darker lately. Like, who... Let, let, let me know if anyone else has had this one. Hey, remember that guy, like, five years back... You had seven shots of vodka and had your first homosexual experience with him. <laughs> but then it got really weird the next day, and you guys had a falling out, and there was a lot of bad blood for a long time. But then, like, you, 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 you swallowed your pride, and you reached out to him, and you patched it up. And, like, you became pretty good friends after that. And then, a month after you, you know, you patched up that bad blood, he died the same way his brother did, in a really tragic death. I want you to know he liked Arby's. <laughs> I'm Jeff Conkle. <laughs>